Ruth Ferrin Gattenberg at this historic event. My name is Oskar Ekström, Program Director of the Book Fair. Do you know how it all started? Um, over 40 years ago, two library directors, Bertil Falk and Connie Jakobsson, met at the conference. Over a late night whiskey at the hotel bar, they came to a conclusion. The conference was incredibly boring. Librarians need inspiration, they said. They need to meet authors. Let's create a book fair. So they did, in 1985. And the rest is a fantastic history. The Gothenburg Book Fair has long been the largest cultural event in the Nordics and an institution in Swedish cultural life. Much has happened, of course, since the first fair in 1985, but everything here still rests on Bertil's and Connie's simple idea, the meeting between authors and readers. As we now celebrate 40 book fairs, we want to honor that idea. We want to honor the truly magnetic authorships, and therefore we have established an honorary award the Mermaid, which is being awarded here for the very first time today. The prize is to be given to a fiction author who has deeply and significantly touched Swedish readers. And this certainly applies to the first recipient. Joyce Carol Oates, who visited the book fair as early as 1987, is one of the most beloved authors of our time, whose work have touched and fascinated readers in Sweden and around the world for decades. It is with great pleasure that we award Joyce Carol Oates the very first mermaid. I will now read the justification. She is a literary heavyweight whose impressive output over six decades has challenged us with questions of violence, sexuality, ethnicity, and family. Her depictions of American dreams and nightmares serve as a universal map of modern human social issues and neurosis. At the same time, her greatest works contain the sometimes overlooked ingredients that once made the old classics read. They are entertaining tales with stylishly crafted momentum. Sjöjungfrun, the Mermaid 2024, is awarded to one of the greatest authors of our time, Joyce Carol Oates. Joyce Carlos, would you please join me on stage to accept the very first Mermaid Award. To the stage, the author Carolina Ramqvist, who will be discussing Joyce Carol's authorship with her. <laughs> and uh, before I leave the stage, uh, I will also uh, uh, mention that uh, Oates has promised to sign a limited number of books after the seminar. Uh, this will take place outside of the hall at the bottom of the escalator. So, thank you, and uh, good luck. <laughs> thank you. So, um, I think I would like to start by just saying something about what we are going to do here. Um, this way of honoring um, 
a phenomenal writer with an interview on stage. Um, the Swedish filmmaker Stig Björkman did a documentary on um, Joyce Carolers called A Boldly in Service of the Mind. It is a film that can be seen on Swedish television and it opens with a quote by Joyce Carolers. If you want to meet me, you will find me in my books. In books is where we meet in the most intimate and mysterious way, through the communal and solitary acts of reading and writing that Joyce Carol Oates has dedicated her life to and also explored in so many brilliant and wonderful and entertaining ways in essays and lectures and memoirs. And when I reread some of them now, like for instance, The Faith of a Writer from 2003, um, it's En Författes uh, in Swedish, I found myself completely failing in all my efforts to plan and structure an interview, since all I wanted to do really was to keep on reading. Um, even just reading old interviews with Joyce Carolers is truly a pleasure. And of course, you get the urge to read all those writers whom she writes and talks about having read. Um, anyway, I suppose everyone here knows this, that the books is where we meet with authors. And yet we have all showed up for this other kind of meeting the kind that we keep staging at book fairs and in libraries and on stages all over the world in celebration of literature, but maybe also a bit like an imitation of what takes place on the pages of a book and in the inner borderlands of reading. Joyce Carolines, thank you so much for being here, taking the time. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's such a it's such a great honor. I'm kind of overwhelmed emotionally, um, but I will try to maintain control here because hearing that I've been working and writing for 60, 60 years is a bit intimidating. It sounds like it's pastorous, and I sort of come back from some other place like a ghost, and like I'm over overhearing this because for most writers we do spend so much solitary time and sort of focusing on what's before us and trying to get the right sentence and then trying to get the right paragraph and the right page. And I do so much revision. It seems a Sisyphean, the kind of you know, labor that comes to no end. And then to realize that I've been doing this for 60 years and that there's somehow other people aware of it, involved in it, is emotionally overwhelming, really. So, thank you. So, how do you feel about this way of meeting with your readers, talking and answering questions instead of... Oh yes, it's very nice to actually meet you know, individuals. And I do teach, I've been teaching for, for many years also. Mm. So I have a very intimate, close relationship with, with young writers. I'm not so young always, I mean, they're all ages, but the people who are beginning to write and, and would like some advice and some, some practical advice too. So I have a good deal of one-on-one -on -one relationships in a professional sense, but most of my life is, a, is alone because I, I actually live all alone with two cats and they are my harshest readers. They just fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so as for me, um, it often, I mean, this situation, it often makes me think about um, another prolific North American writer, a friend of yours, Margaret Atwood. Oh, yes. Um, and she wrote this book called Negotiating with the Dead out of her Empson lectures. And in it, she mentions this epigram that she found in a magazine and tacked to her office bulletin board. And I'm going to read it. It reads, Wanting to meet an author because you like his work is like wanting to meet a duck because you like pâté. <laughs> um, what do you think about this want to meet the author in person? Why did you 
the writer versus me? Uh, yes, the, the, this, I mean, as Oscar mentioned. Well, um, it's an interesting question, and I think it really demands a lot of uh, sort of explanation because there are some people who are outgoing and who will speak honestly and candidly because they're sort of uh, conversant and, and, let's say, verbal. There are many artists and, and writers, too, who are extremely introverted. Like, if Emily Dickinson were here, I think she would be stricken with, you know, shyness and, and probably not really articulate at all. Then there are other people who are more accustomed, like professors, to, to actually addressing audiences and looking people in the eye. So it's sort of a range of personalities, but some artists are really uh, not open to the outside world. They are, and I'm sometimes in a category, they're kind of stricken with the mystery of their own being. Mm. Like, if you are Franz Kafka, let's say, there's a certain profound strangeness and specialness and otherness to your being that would probably only best express itself through, through writing, but not necessarily through speaking. So William James said that we have as many personalities as the people who, who know us. So there's a public self, and you're a writer, a sister novelist, and you know that the self, when you're writing your novels, is very private, and there's an integrity of the text. So you find a voice and a, a language for that text, for the people, but that's not necessarily something that exists in the world otherwise. And if you write another book, it's not the same. It can be, it can be really quite different. Mm -hmm. So I try to make a differentiation between the very private self, which is only in the books, but only in each book. There's not really a not really a count to do any. And then the more public self. I actually had this book, The Lost Landscape, which is my memoir, so then I'm speaking out of my own self to the world, whereas in a novel, it's not the same voice. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so congratulations on this okay. award. Yeah. I believe it's wonderful. Yes. I believe it's your 32nd award, the 32nd literary prize. Pardon me? I believe it's your 32nd literary award. Uh, I don't know. you stop counting? Oh, well, this is the first that uh, has such an exquisite, sorry, uh, sort of abstract mm -hmm. mermaid. It's sort of like the essence of mermaid rather than the literal, like the Hans Christian Anderson. Very, you know, this is more like the spirit, maybe, of a, an individual who happens to be female, but it's actually like a spiritual, spiritual man. Um, so a simple thing like counting can be a bit of a challenge when it comes to the work of Joyce Carriers, or the work of you, I should say, because you do use different pen names from time to time. Um, you have published over 150 books across nearly every literary genre. Um, it seems to be 64 novels. The latest one is Butcher. It is Smith in Jodelica Street. There's a um, Swedish translation. And it was out only a few days ago. Um, then there is at least said to be 48 short story collections, 16 collections of non fiction, 10 drama publications. 10 books for children and young adults, and nine collections of poetry. Um, just this year, you were awarded Honorary Doctor of Human Letters at Princeton University, and also presented with the Philippe Jail in France. Um, you are a five-time Pulitzer Prize finalist, and a five-time nominee for the National Book Award for Fiction. Um, which was also given to your fourth novel, then, in 1970. Um, you must have been one of the youngest recipients of the National Book Award. 
Was that the one that changed something for you? Well, I don't, um, I can remember if I made an effort, you know, but I don't really care. It's not as around so much in my daily life. Uh, as I said, I live alone and I'm working and I have two cats, and so I don't really think a lot about the past. But of course, an award is especially meaningful and, and, and helpful to a young writer who may have been working hard but didn't have a breakthrough, but they have a breakthrough. So the National Book Award was for me something like that. I had written a number of books that were nominated, and that was the first major award. So then you get a lot of attention from the media, people who would never dream of asking you anything before. The next day, if you win an award or something, they want to know your opinion. So you have kind of a sense of humor about it. But the, the most, the largest award that I received in terms of readers was the o Oprah Book Club. Sure. So when Oprah, who is a national book club baby, yes, we were among Oprah is a national treasure in America. We don't have many national treasures in America, especially right now. We are a very troubled country. <laughs> That's why it's so nice to be here. Unfortunately, we're going back tomorrow. <laughs> I hope that we're actually not aware of what I'm saying. But Oprah was, it is this, this amazing force for literacy, for people reading. 